So what is, what's the first order of business when you, in this situation? I have a, Right now? Yeah, I mean, new coach. <laughs> yeah, just get, we're, right now we just had our first team meeting uh, on Monday, uh, just getting to know the guys. We're going through the installs right now and really just creating those relationships with those guys and really getting to know them. You know, a lot of these guys, first time seeing them in person. Uh, there are a few guys, you know, here the last couple of weeks that have popped in, and but a lot of guys just came back. So really just connecting with those guys, getting to know them and installing the system. What's, what's the message? Like this team's coming off of a really just difficult season, and I know you weren't here, but in April, everyone has a lot of optimism, right? Mm -hmm. The draft's coming, there's, there's hope. What is your message as you start this? L let's just get better every single day. Let's do whatever we can in our power as coaches and players to be better than we were yesterday. You know what I mean? And just the connection and really getting to know the guys. Like I said earlier, I think that's the biggest thing is to, for us to be the best we can, like we really got to get to know each other and create those relationships. When you guys were in Philly, uh, Nick said that you guys, especially when the staff first got there, you did a lot of stuff together to kind of get to know each other. Is the offensive staff kind of doing that kind of stuff right now, or are you kind of trying to find stuff for them to do? Yeah, we've been doing a couple of those things over the past, you know, two months that I've been here, just kind of outside the building, you know, creating those connections, whether it's dinner, or going to a basketball game, went to the Pacers game uh, as a staff, which was awesome to see those guys play. Um, but all those little things outside the building to create those relationships, yeah. How important is that when you have, you know, there are some guys that you had that you know before, but there's some guys you pulled in, you know, just off of interviews. How important is that in terms of? Yeah, there's no question. You know, the uh, I talked about it, the character piece, you know, and then creating the chemistry within the staff and, you know, with the team. I think that's big. You know, when you can create really good chemistry uh, within the staff and you guys are all pulling in the same direction, everyone's on the same page, you know, things could be special. And when you talk to the players, even the coaches. Does last year come up, or is everything forward? It, it's all. It's all. It's all about now. It's. It's all it is. It's all about this year. Uh, whatever happened in the past happened in the past, and we're focused on the present right now. You guys have been busy meeting with some quarterbacks the last couple of weeks. This mm -hmm. week, I'm sure. Yeah. You feel good about what you guys have learned and where you're at. In that yeah, process? we're still. We're still going through that process. You know, we're 15 days away from the draft and still working through all those things. When you talk with the players, how do you? Can you tell if, if your message is getting through to them? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's just the first time. Yeah, it's the first time. It's early again. We got. I got to keep creating those relationships and those guys really getting to know me. You know, it's only been a couple days, but again, you know, every day you got to be intentional with what you're doing uh, as coaches and players uh, about creating those relationships and getting to know. Them. Shane, what would you like your players to know about you? Uh, that I'm going to be who I am. I'm, I'm just a passionate guy that loves ball uh, and that I want to feed the positive, weed out all the negative, uh, and be my very best every day I can uh, to support these guys in their roles because I know how hard it is to play in this league, being around it uh, for you know, going into my 13th season, what these guys go through week in and week out to get ready to play on Sundays. It ain't easy, um, and I respect everything they do. As you just uh, addressed, you guys have spent a lot of time zeroing on these quarterbacks in this draft. There is outside a lot of noise, or has been a lot of noise, about you know, what other options you might uh, look into, Lamar Jackson or others. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say you're more focused on the draft than any other possibilities right yeah, now? Yeah, we're focused on the draft, and I'm going to focus on the guys that are in the building right now. That's, that's, that's where we're at. I don't want to call it a pinch me moment, but we talked to a lot of guys who go from assistant GM to GM or OC to head coach. Yeah. Now that you're in the job, has there been a moment that's like, wow, this is a little bit different? There's more administrative stuff that come across your desk. Um, it's been good to get the guys back in the building. You know, we just had our some meetings and just install and get back into the football side of it, which has been really good. But yeah, just getting used to the administrative stuff and all the stuff that'll come across your desk. Uh, that's new for me. You've had these first two months a lot of personnel work, obviously the coaching staff. Is this week kind of refreshing getting back into kind of an install and, and scheme now? Yeah, there's no question about it. I, I love the X's and O's part of it. Um, teaching these guys, being around the guys, creating the connections part of it. Uh, there ain't nothing like it. I think it's the best job in America to do what we do as coaches and players, uh, to be in the National Football League, and don't ever take it for granted. And it's, it's been awesome. What kind of environment do you want to see here with the players? And what kind of expectations have you laid out for them? Yeah, just, just really, I mean, you guys heard me talk about the pillars, the character, the preparation, the consistency, and being relentless, but just really creating those connections. Because I truly do. The teams that like play really hard for each other are really connected. And you know we kind of had that going in Philly last year, just the way our guys were, how close, tight knit they were. Like I think the best teams around the league, when you create that connection part of it, uh, it, it can be really special. So really creating the connections uh, and the expectations are just again like just be the best you can at version of yourself uh, and, and go hard every day. Shane, are you a 
leadership council guy, like you want your players to have a leadership council, and if you are a leadership council guy, if they had one last year, those yeah. guys all automatically are they? Yeah, no, we'll have that, and we'll we'll vote on that here in a couple weeks. We'll all have one of those, yes. Shane, you knew you had to hit the ground running when you got the job, and you had your plan in place. It seemed like you were very organized. Do you like the way everything's proceeded? Obviously, you have different hurdles to still attack. Yeah, yeah. Again, I, I do feel pleased with the process of where it's at. You know, um, coming in, obviously, we got you know the voluntary mini camp coming up. So excited to get out on the grass with these guys. But uh, the process has been good. Um, excited uh, from you know the future and what it holds. When you get when you got here, you hadn't really seen a lot of this team, I imagine, because you were somewhere else. Right. Uh, how much you, you talked about looking forward? How much of tape or otherwise have you watched though, just to kind of learn a little bit about what's in the building and what have you learned, maybe? Yeah, I think again, I've said this before when I got hired. There's some talent, you know, on this team, and uh, again, I'm still getting to know these guys. Uh, you know, the big thing for me is when we get out there on the grass to really see them live and in person. You know, the tape tells a story which is good and the tape is, is tells a lot of truth um, but again to get them in person and see their body movements and see what they do well and how you know we want to use these guys offensively defensively and special teams Did you tell anything about how they learned these first few days because you're probably throwing a lot at them and it's all new right you have yeah system. today was like the really the first day we really started X's and O's the first you know the first two days you know whatever we're just kind of getting to know these guys you know welcome back you know weight room and then just creating those connections uh, and then today we start talking football offensively you mentioned putting the offense together with Jim Bob where is that at is that still ongoing sort of figured out what it's going to look like yeah I mean the terminology is in place again and like I said it, it comes down to the players we want to do a good job of putting our players in position to make plays um, and so again see out there. and see him out there and then kind of create the offense uh, from that standpoint that's how we want to do it I'm sit teaching that offense to these players how much does it help to have a quarterback like Gardner Minshew who You've worked with in the past, which I'm guessing knows some of that terminology. Yeah, no, it's huge. Anytime you got a guy that knows the system, knows the terminology, you know, you can kind of hit the ground running uh, with him. So uh, excited to add Gardner to the fold, um, and he'll be good for us. Uh, with 15 days to go to the draft, what what's left in terms of preparing for the draft and, and taking a look at your quarterbacks? Yeah, I think just turn over every stone. You know, don't leave any stone unturned, you know, because you want to find out as much information you can on all these prospects uh, and go through that process. And that means calling as many people as you can to find out that information. That's what you got to do. And then again, going back and watching the tape over and over and over again. Because uh, again, like, there's not a crystal ball to like, hey, this guy is a guarantee, right? Um, but, you know, you want to do your due diligence and process uh, to try to find the best players. Do you get more from those guys in your building or you go visit the quarterback prospects outside? What are you looking for? What's the biggest thing you're looking for? I'm looking for good guys. I mean, that's the biggest thing. I'm looking for good guys. Obviously, there's the tangibles and the intangibles, and I'm not going to get into all the details of what I look for, but really I want, I want good guys in this building. Do you get more from the interviews or the workouts? I think it's both. I mean, the workouts, you kind of know from the film, but then you see them in person, but really getting to know them. I think that's a big part of this process is really getting to know who that person is, uh, the work ethic, the character, uh, all those little different things uh, that you want in a player. How many guys in the building right now and uh, today, and how's Darius Leonard, Shaq Leonard? Uh, Darius, yeah, Shaq, he's uh, been progressing well. I'm not going to put a timetable on his return, but uh, we've had good attendance. Uh, you guys, from what I hear, you, when you put these uh, quarterbacks with the, the, the uh, individual workouts, they're pretty intense. Um, without getting into details, just what are you trying to accomplish there, and, and is that intentional? Uh, yeah, I mean, we just have our process of how we want to do it um, and just put them through certain things that we want to see them do uh, that we could do offensively here. Uh, and that's that's it. Like I said, I'm not going to get into too much of that. One of the things that you had, part of the success in Philly was you had a kicker you could trust and you relied on. Having that guy here, how does that impact, I guess, how you head coach? Yeah, no, it's big. Anytime you got a really good kicker uh, that's you know done done it at a high level the last couple of years, that helps. I think you know this league's all about scoring points, and however you need to do that, touchdowns, field goals, um, to get points on the board is critical. So to have a kicker uh, like Gay is, is huge. You talk about finding good guys. Is there something else you're looking for, particularly when it comes to a quarterback, because of the for pressure they're going to be faced with when they're looked at as the face of the front yeah. the rest of the league? Yeah, I mean, the, just the, the tangibles, right? You guys have heard me talk about the accuracy, decision-making, ability to create, and then all the intangibles, like the character piece. I'm going to go back to that. Like, I just think that's critical. Like, how, the, how does the guy carry himself day in and day out? 
Uh, is he going to hold himself accountable? All those different things. Uh, I, there's a little, there's little nuances to everything, um, but again, the character piece is big to me. You see a couple of moments of like when they faced adversity, when they failed to see like because everyone right now is, is and great. They're, yeah, and those are questions you ask throughout the process. You know, guys have been through certain adversity. How do they handle adversity? You know, how have they dug themselves out of a hole? And I think a lot of guys that are in this league have been through adversity. It ain't easy, you know, to be in this league as a player, um, as a coach uh, to get here. There's a lot of things that go on. Uh, and I think a, lo a lot of guys have been through it, some greater than others to get to this point. But uh, I think everybody in life, whether it's football or life, people are going to go through adversity. And like you said, it's how, how do you handle it? Can you get a real, like legit feel for the character of these guys in two hours? That, that to me, that's the vetting process or too. Yeah, some, yeah, sometimes they could. They, I mean, they, some guys could do that. But, again, it's the vetting process that you go through, right? You've got to call as many people as you can, right, guys that you trust and know uh, that will give you good information. There's this S2 test that has replaced the Wonderlick. Mm -hmm. uh, people seem kind of split on it, but in terms of evaluating these quarterbacks, what's your take on it so far? Um, you know, those tests are good. I'm not going to get into too many details uh, on, on them. But, uh, yeah, guys have their take. Um, again, I'm not going to get into too much of that. How do you find the balance of like wanting to implement your changes but not forcing it, you know, into some people who have to just kind of get it on their own organically? Yeah, I think that it's, some of that stuff does. Like, it does happen organically, you know what I mean? But I think it really goes back to creating those relationships. Like, culture is just a word, but, like, it can't just be, like, words that live on a board in your in your meeting room and in your weight room and in your locker room. Like, again, you got to be intentional about creating that culture, right? Every single day, live those things. Live the character piece. Live the preparation piece. Live the consistency and be relentless. Like, i got to be the same guy, and I would expect our players to be the same guy every single day.